So, what we have learned in last class that basically atomic nature of uh, matters. So, atoms are indivisible and participate in chemical reaction in atomic weight or atomic number ratio that this is basically follow up of Dalton's hypothesis. Then we have learned that 1 gram mole of any matter contains the same number of atoms or molecules that is basically that number is Avogadro number 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. So, that is the follow up of Avogadro's hypothesis. So, it is clear now that this matter is made of atom and atom we can count atom we can get weight of atom. So, this type of uh, uh, situation at present. Now, uh, also we have learned that uh, uh, second things we want to wanted to know that what is the constituents of, of an atom. So, in that direction, so we are working. So, uh, this uh, one constituent is uh, the electron. So, how the electron was discovered? So, that we have seen this uh, the existence of an elementary unit of electricity in atoms and the natural unit of electricity in quantity is E equal to F by Avogadro number, F is Faraday constant. So, this this uh, this has come up following the uh, Faraday's law of uh, electrolysis and then in 1897 J. J. Thomson made first direct measurement of the smallest possible charge and in 1909 this millikan made the first accurate measurement of E electronic charge in his famous oil drop experiment. Okay. So, for, uh, I will continue discussion on the how this measurement was done uh, by J. Uh, J. Thompson and uh, this uh, um, millikan. So, that I would like to uh, discuss in this class. So, J. J. Thomson measured the charge by mass ratio of cathode ray particle using deflection of, of cathode ray in electric and magnetic field and he found the specific charge that is E by m equal to minus 1.76 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg. So, how the experiment was done that that is what I, I was I started to discussion in last class. So, I will continue that discussion. So, uh, J. J. Thompson So, he used cathode ray. So, from discharge tube cathode ray uh, is generated. Now, that cathode ray now from cathode from cathode cathode ray is coming cathode ray is coming. Okay. And falling on a screen, fluorescent screen, fluorescent screen. So, 
So, cathode ray is, uh, is consists of is, uh, is some particle having charge, charge particle and it has some velocity, it has some velocity and if we put a screen here, fluorescent screen. Okay. So, you can see where it is sitting. So, you can locate the position of bombardment. So, initially it was hitting at this point, at this point. Now, what J. J. Thomson did, he applied electric field. So, how to apply electric field? You know this, uh, we use these two uh, metal plate and then apply voltage between these two metal plate. So, put two metal plate say here to put two metal plate say here okay, and apply apply voltage. So, it is plus terminal that is the minus terminal and this length of this plate is say x 1, length of this plate say x 1 and width of this plate separation of this plate is say d separation of this plate is say d capital d okay and then the screen distance from this uh, end of this capacitor plate is uh, say x 2 x 2. Okay. So, now if we apply voltage V, if we apply voltage V, so electric field is defined as electric field E equal to V by D equal to V by D right. Now, this initial velocity of this of this cathode ray is along x axis say so this is the x axis and if we take this this is the y axis. So, initial velocity is uh, along the x axis is, uh, is say v or we can write v x v or v x right. So, so it will take time so, this ray will take time to pass this distance x 1 distance if that time is if that time is t 1 t 1 equal to x 1 distance divided by velocity v x and to traverse this distance x 2 distance it will if it takes time t 2. So, t 2 will be x 2 by v x right. So, this is before applying 
electric field. So, this cathode ray will take time T 1 and T 2 to pass from here to here x 1 plus x 2 distance. Now, if we apply electric field, it will it will apply force on the uh, charged particle because cathode ray consists of charged particle that is known. So, it will apply force on the charged particle what is that force? So, force you know this force is basically Lorentz force, force is basically Lorentz force I can write here uh, or I can I can write here Lorentz force, Lorentz force. Okay. So, you know that charge Q force equal to charge Q, then electric field plus V cos V magnetic field. Okay. So, this is the Lorentz force due to electric field and magnetic field. So, now due to electric field, due to electric field there is no magnetic field at present. So, this force is basically F that force will act in which direction? Charged particle and this force direction is along the electric field direction. So, along the y direction. So, F y along the y direction. So, force that will be charge Q and the electric field Q e right F y. Now, due to this force acting along the y direction Now, this charged particle moving along the x axis with velocity v x. Now, what will be the velocity or what will be the distance traversed along the y direction? So, that you know this shall we write. So, that will be say y 1 between this. Uh, when it is in electric field. So, y 1 is uh, u t plus half t half f t square you know this initial velocity, but this initial velocity is here along the y axis along the y axis is 0. So, u t that part is 0. So, generally we write u t plus half f t square right. So, along the y axis this velocity is 0, initial velocity is 0. So, that is half f t square y 1. So, half okay, f what will be f? f will be this is the force, force is you know mass into acceleration. So, f will be equal to q this by m right. So, I can write q e by m that is the and t square. So, that is t 1 basically t 1. So, t square t 1 square t 1 is x 1 x 1 by v x that is square. Okay. So, so, starting from here, so this velocity was along the x axis. Now, when it is entered in this electric field, so another force will act along the y axis along the y direction. So, then 
it will move towards the y direction as well as x direction. So, as a resultant when it will reach here, so it is a really I think I have to take slightly okay. So, it will reach here then it will go out from the electric field after that there there is no electric field. So, at this position this this is basically y 1 this is basically y 1 this is basically y 1 ok. So, so after that electric field is 0, but it has now velocity along this direction along this direction. So, what will be that velocity along this direction? So, v y v y will be after time t 1. So, v y will be v y will be after time t 1. So, that I can write uh, u plus initial value uh, that is uh, uh, u plus f t initial velocity plus acceleration to time. So, time is here t 1. So, that initial velocity along the y direction was 0. So, the expression f t 1 f is q t by m this is the f and t 1 t 1 is x 1 by v x x 1 by v x right. So, that will be the velocity along the y direction at this point ok. Now, there is no electric field. So, there will not be any force on the on the charged particle. So, there will not be any acceleration. So, that will be the constant will move with that constant velocity and so it will reach sorry. No, it is it will be straight line, it is more or less straight line. Extend the screen, ok. So, it will hit here, it will hit here on the screen. So, this distance, this distance. If we take it is y 2 on the screen. So, what will be the y 2? What will be the y 2? So, this is the y 1 and y 2 will be y 2 will be y 1 because it reach here after that it is moving. So, how long it is moving? How long it is moving? This it is taking time t 2, it is taking time t 2 right. So, basically it will move with velocity v y, it will move with velocity v y for time t 2 for time t 2 right. So, So, I know v y I know 
T 2. So, now I can put here put here y 1. So, that is there. So, let me keep it here y 1 plus what is v y? v y is this. So, so this part is common x 1 v x also common okay. and additionally I have to multiply with T 2. Okay. So, with that I have to multiply with T 2. So, what difference we are seeing? So, here x 1 by v x square and here x 1 v x and x 2 v x right and half is there additional. So, you can write here. So, I can take common q by m q by m e E and x one by v x square, right? Then here half into x one by x one. So I will get half x one, half x one, and here I will get. Uh, x 2 this x 2 I will get x 2 right. So, it is not visible. So, I think I can write uh, I can write here basically y 2 equal to q y m x 1 divided by v x square half x 1 x 1 plus x 2. Okay. So, that is my expression. So, here what I want to find out? I want to find out here. So, y 2 I can measure from geometry. So, this initially that is the uh, before applying electric field it, it hit here and after applying electric field it hit here. Okay. So, this y 2 I can measure x 1 x 2 I can measure x 1 x 2 I can measure I can measure E because applied voltage and the separation d is known. So, I can measure E. Okay. So, only I have to know V x, I have to know V x, if I know V x then I can find out Q by m, I can find out Q by m. Okay. So, for that I have to know, I have to know v x. So, how to find out v x that is the um, uh, question. So, now to find out v x basically what uh, J J Thompson did he applied magnetic field, he applied magnetic field. So, how to get magnetic field basically we use Helmholtz coil we use Helmholtz coil. So, you know Helmholtz coil this two coil and another coil is this. Okay. So, between uh, two coil it is produced electric field uh, magnetic field it produced magnetic field. So, basically in coil if you have if you if you pass current through it, so it generates magnetic field. So, two coils in same direction you are uh, putting current. Okay. So, basically if you pass current 
should be square. So, this uh, you will get magnetic field between these two coil and this field will be uniform if the separation of these two coil is equal to the radius of the of the coil. So, that is the condition for getting the homogeneous magnetic field. Okay. So, now these two coils was put along the y direction. So, it was put like like this. Okay. So, field direction is this. So, what is this direction? This is the gate direction, this is the gate direction. Okay. So, Helmholtz coil, these two coil, one is other side and another is this side. So, magnetic field will be in this direction. Okay. So, so, magnetic field thus it is applied here and so that due to that magnetic field what is this uh, moving charge uh, field force. So, what is that force that basically F equal to F equal to Q V cross V V cross V. So, V is now along the x direction okay, along the x direction. So, and B is along the z direction, B is along the z direction. So, x cross x cross z. So, its force will act along the y direction, force will act along the y direction. The, it is the same direction of the uh, force due to the electric field. Okay. So, so this q v x then magnetic field, magnetic field one can write B z along the z direction. Okay. So, this force will act along the y direction and electric field also act along the y direction. So, when these two force, so if I choose the direction of magnetic field in such a way, so if you change the direction, this force direction will change right? in such a way that uh, that whatever the uh, force due to the electric field that will be balanced by the force due to the magnetic field. So, in that case this force will be balanced when it will be balanced there will not be there this net force on the net force on the uh, on the charged particle will be 0 on the cathode particle cathode rays will be 0. So, then this q v x v z will be equal to the the force q e that force q e right. So, so whatever the so in that case what will happen the cathode ray it will not deviate it will not deviate in presence of electric and magnetic both field. Okay. So, it will move uh, on deviation without deviation. So, that is the condition for the equal force due to the electric field and due to the magnetic field. So, from here from here one can get V x equal to q q will go V x equal to E by V z E by V z. Okay. So, electric field and magnetic field is known. So, how much magnetic field we are so that uh, one can measure. Uh, so, this is known. So, one can find out the V x one can find out V x. Okay. One can find out V x. So, thus this V x was fine. So, that is what we need to find out the Q by m charge by mass and that that we see very nice experiment and this Thomson found this value is E by m. So, whatever Q in gel we are writing. So, this this basically um, 
electronic charge later on we found that this, this is the electric he gave the name that is the uh, is the uh, uh, that that uh, uh, cathode ray contains the negative charge and that negative charge one can find out this seeing the direction of this uh, motion of the charge you know along the y direction. So, if it is positive and this charge particle moving towards this positive uh, plate, so that means it is negative charge. So, that way one can find out the sign of the charge. So, that is uh, uh, Q by m or E by m he found that was minus 1.76 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, so this is nice experiment and J. J. Thomson basically directly he measure the um, specific charge, but but not exactly the charge of electron, but his experiment basically tells about the existence of the of the charge particle in atom in atom yeah in atom or not that is probably is uh, 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 difficult to say, but this cathode ray contains the uh, particles that particles is basically he call this particle is electron and its charge and mass ratio is this that is the uh, findings of this J. Uh, J. Thomson. Now, next uh, this exact accurate measurement of charge of electron was done by Millikan in his famous uh, experiment that is the Millikan uh, Wildorf experiment. So, he measured basically the charge of an electron using negatively charged oil drops and he found that charge of electron E is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and this. Uh, uh, so, E by m that value was uh, reported by the J. J. Thomson and this uh, uh, mass of the electron one can find out from these two millikans measurement that gives E equal to 1.6 into 10 to the minus 19 and uh, specific charge uh, from the Thomson's experiment. So, that is 1.76 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kg. So, then from these two relation one can find out the mass of an electron and that is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Now, again this how what is that experiment Millikan's weld of uh, experiment that is very famous experiment and uh, that I will discuss uh, I will continue this discussion next class. So, I will stop here thank you.